Day where Mikey Allen goes around to the Ohio Valley, different businesses, different locations, and uh, says hello and, and does some social stuff there. Uh, with everything that's going on in the world right now, uh, we decided to do the responsible thing and not send Mikey out into public. Um, so we, we put together a new show. It's called Split Screen, and I'm going to be hosting for the next couple of weeks uh, with some different personalities and different people uh, throughout the Ohio Valley. Um, our first guest today, you can see her on your screen right now, is a familiar face, a multimedia journalist from our very own 7 News, uh, Miss Shelby Davis. Hi, Shelby. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining me today. Of course. Uh, so with everything going on, I'm in my basement. You're in your living room, it looks like. Yep. We're, we're all doing our part in keeping our social distance. Um, Right. How things been going? How how are you doing? You know what? I personally am doing really well. Um, I think that uh, relating back to the station, we're trying to do our best with our social distancing. We've made a lot of changes. So, you know, it's going, but it's been a little tough. <laughs> now, I understand today is actually your day off, but but as they say, there are no days off in journalism. Is that true? That's absolutely true. Um, and, you know, not only are there no days off in journalism, there's no days off in journalism during a pandemic. So, right. um, I mean, there's been days where I've picked up shifts. I know everybody's kind of wearing multiple hats around the station. Um, but really, even on my days off, my true days off, I'm sitting here trying to think of creative ways to tell stories because really the only thing people want to hear right now is how people are being affected. And there are a lot of people being affected, but just, you know, those unique ways to kind of tell those stories and also just trying to be creative while social distancing has been a little challenging as well, you know, FaceTime interviews, uh, just all these, you know, social distancing things that we're doing. It's, it's definitely no days off, that's for sure. Let's go back two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, when all of this was still, we're still learning a little bit about the, the COVID-19 and the coronavirus, and, and it, it didn't seem to be that big of an issue at that point. So we're, yeah. we're going through, I mean, just in a month's time, less than a month's time, uh, walk me through that. What's, what's the feeling in the newsroom? How is everybody handling this? I mean, like you said, we never thought that this was going to happen. I mean, I remember, um, you know, it's not that we were, <laughs> I don't know. I like, I remember a few weeks ago that, you know, when it was still back in China um, and, you know, other parts of the uh, air, or of the world, but it hadn't really hit the U.S. yet. We were all sitting there like, ah, oh, you know, like this is crazy, but um, it wasn't something we were like completely honed in on. Um, now it's what we talk about. I mean, our first segment of our newscast before we even go to our first break is 12 minutes long now, whereas before it was maybe eight minutes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have changed a lot. And I mean, I there are days where I'll look at my producer and it's the entire newscast, there's every single story has something to do with the coronavirus because it's it's insane. And I don't think anyone realizes how fast this grew um, here in the journalism community. We it, I mean, it was like almost like a smack in the face. We were like, wow, you know, it really is. And. And you look at things from the, the perspective of the news cycle where, where stories come and they become big and then they kind of fade out and go away and, and things come and go. There's ups and downs on news stories. We're in, in three solid weeks of a topic A that just has not gone away. Absolutely. Have you guys felt any, I, I, surely you guys are feeling some news fatigue on that. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, it, it is it is draining. Mentally, it is very, very draining. Um, you know, we have all these story ideas, but uh, trying to get some of them to even work is really draining as well because, uh, you know, there's a lot of older officials in our community. You know, as we've talked a thousand and one times, West Virginia is a very elderly state. So um, trying to talk to those people while keeping a social distance has been hard. Trying to, you know, work with them, do phone interviews instead of FaceTime interviews. Um, so that's been a little challenging. Um, and it, it is, it has been very mentally draining just because just trying to figure out new ideas and new, uh, angles on this virus. What, it, it, from your perspective, what, it, what things are you covering that you think are, are in most informative for the public right now? Um, I think one of the things that you can't pound in you know, pound into a newscast enough is washing your hands. And, you know, one of the things I was watching a video, I'm in, I'm in a few different uh, journalism groups on Facebook, and I was watching someone do a video where they took white gloves and covered their hands, and then they wash, they put a little bit of paint on it, 
and properly washed our hands. And I was amazed because I saw I that. Know, yeah, I didn't know some. You realize all the spots on your hand that you Absolutely. don't really hit most of the time. Yeah. So I think that that's something we can't talk about enough. I think that really the community and how, you know, small town people have been impacted We can't cover that enough. So that's really what we've been trying to focus in on is, you know, obviously this is is, this is affecting everyone. Um, And although our state hasn't been, you know, hit as hard as New York, um, for example, it's still affecting us very widely. And so I think being able to get out there and tell people's stories and how this is really affecting everyone uh, has been something we couldn't talk about enough either. You know, there's been a lot of, there, well, one, there's been a lot of great coverage from the 7 News team. You guys are doing just a fantastic job covering both, not only the, the more serious end of things, the, the you know, the washing of hands and all the things that you can be doing, but also telling real life stories of this is what's happening in our community. Um, you're seeing hospitals chip in and and all of a sudden are doing a hundred times more work than they were ever going before. And they were already doing a lot. You're seeing uh, teachers having to to uproot their entire system and work from home and teach kids uh, over the internet. You're seeing every business that uh, is essential have to stay open and and businesses that maybe aren't considered essential, they're facing issues too. So I think there, there are a ton of stories. And obviously with any story like this, there's a lot of bad news. But I think if you dig down into those, I think you find some good news stories too. Have you found that to be the case? Yeah, you know what? I I will say being a journalist during this time is the most frustrating and rewarding thing. Um, And that's almost any time, I'll be honest. But especially during times like this, you know, we have to get out there and tell those sad stories. But at the same time, seeing how the community has pulled together um, just here in the Ohio Valley has been so uplifting. Um, You know, I covered a story on, I believe it was Tuesday, and it might be one of my favorite stories I've covered to date. Um, The Senric Mackin teachers, you know, I'm a McMeckin resident, but Senator McMeckin teachers uh, actually got out in their cars. They practiced social distancing by staying each, everyone was in their own car. Um, And there was probably 40 cars and they just paraded through McMeckin and Benwood, every single street. They covered every single, it was literally an hour and 15 minute long parade. It was huge. Um, Just to be able to see their kids. Um, so a lot of the kids were staying inside their houses in the windows and waving from the windows. People were out on the sidewalks, on their porches, um, all while still practicing social distancing, of course. But it was just, it was really, I mean, when I, when they pulled back into that parking lot at the end of the day, I said this in my story, when they pulled back into the parking lot at the end of the day, there was not a dry eye in sight. Yeah. Um, yeah. it was, it was just really uplifting to be able to see, um, how much these kids really cherish their teachers and how much these ch- teachers cherish their kids. Um, it was, it was just super sweet. So there has been a lot of really cool stories. And of course, you know, the amount of people that have taken their own money and went to, you know, Joanne fabrics and bought and f- bought fabric to make masks for, you know, tri-state ambulance or like, you know, some of the hospital workers it's, it's, it's been truly um, inspiring. We've seen some amazing things, and, and I think that comes with with being limited in what you're able to do. Obviously, they say necessity is the mother of invention, so you, you get creative whenever you're limited on what you can do. Um, you mentioned teachers, and, and, and I can't say enough about teachers. I'm not just saying that because my wife's a teacher. She's done an amazing job as well, um, but my son's preschool teacher uh, actually drove by, got out of the car, and, and got chalk out and drew a rainbow for my son on, on the sidewalk. Like Little things like that, you really, you really realize how much teachers and nurses and doctors and ambulance drivers and first responders and restaurant everybody that is considered an essential part of our community is really stepping up and working high above their pay grade right now it's an amazing thing yeah absolutely my mom is a flight nurse out of wetzel county she works for her evac and you know as you as we talked about in the beginning you know she was kind of the one person I look forward to look, look to for advice on all of this because, you know, she's been a nurse for forever. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when I saw her mood change from comfortable to a little anxious, that's when I started to, you know, be like, Oh, this is real. Like this is, this is personal. Um, But, you know, having a mom that's a nurse has always inspired me, but especially during these times being on the front lines, it's, uh, I mean, I don't have enough appreciation for nurses, uh, teachers during this time having to change, especially in Marshall County. We have, um, you know, 
we're not the richest area. So not everyone has access to Wi-Fi. And the way that these teachers are being creative to connect with their students is insane. So yeah, those essential people in our community, you don't realize how essential they are until it's times like these where they are wearing every hat possible. Yeah, it's an amazing thing to see. Um, now, what about you? What are you doing on your day off? Uh, other than other than chatting with me online, what are you doing on your day off? Taking some time off, avoiding burnout. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my last day off, I sat there and I, I think I texted a list of probably 20 different story ideas to Bob and Brenda. But uh, today I've actually kind of taken some time to relax. I've uh, gotten to catch up on some laundry today. Um, <laughs> I actually got to drink my coffee while it was hot. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that was impressive. Um, and I've spent some time out in the yard with my dog. <laughs> well, good. Good. It's a nice day out. I, I guess yeah. if there's if there's one bright spot uh, in any of this, it's that we've had some nice weather. And, and I think the weather has, is going to be shaping up. So that's nice. Yeah, you know, and it's nice because then people aren't, you know, that state that um, shelter in place order doesn't have to necessarily necessarily mean in your home. I, you know, living in McMeckin, uh, I'm sure you know, driving through McMeckin, anyone has noticed this, but we're a big dog community, <laughs> uh, and the amount of people that I can look out my window right now and see walking their dog, you know, they're keeping a social distance, but just being able to get fresh air and like I couldn't imagine if this was happening in, you know. November or December when it's in the dead of growing. winter. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. That I would, that, I think that would just make things every and make everything worse. So there, there is some bright spots in all of this. Yeah. It's it, especially, I've got a five-year-old at home right now. So it, as right. soon as I can push him out the back door and say, go run around in the yard, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we've been doing. My uh, boyfriend's niece is uh, six years old and she's the same way. She's like yep. jumping off the walls and we're like, yep. get outside, go for a walk. <laughs> They're bored. Kids are bored. And I totally yeah. get it because I, I mean, I'm working from home, so I'm working a full day. But at the same time, like I, I don't when you don't leave the house for a couple of days on end, you get bored. Yeah, you get a little stir crazy. That's uh, what a lot. Of, I mean, that's what I've said before. I'm I'm blessed to be able to still go to work. I mean, even though it is scary times and we're taking all these precautions at work, precautions that I've never seen before um, and things that, you know, you know, Brenda mentioned that she's been in the industry for how many years and she's yep. never expected any of this to change. Um, but, you know, so I'm thankful that I'm able to get out of the house nearly every day and go to work uh, and still make money uh, that a lot of people are, I know, struggling to get through unemployment and that sort of thing right now. So, yeah, getting <laughs> definitely get out of the house when you can, because I think that's the only thing that's keeping any of us sane right now. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on Split Screen. Um, next week, I, I guess uh, Mikey is handling a lot of the scheduling for the guests. So I think I guess next week we're going to be talking with a hairdresser who's going to teach us how to cut your hair at home. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> she, she'll have her work cut out for me. I oh, think I can. Go. It's not going to help me at all. But uh, that'll be that'll be next week on Split Screen. So Shelby Davis, uh, you can see her on uh, WTRF. Channel 7 News, and also some great stories at WTRF.com. Shelby, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, that's Split Screen, a production of Love OV and WTRF 7 News. Uh, visit us online on Facebook, Love OV, WTRF, WTRF.com, um, Facebook, and I think I got it all. So, I think you did. <laughs> all right, thanks. See you later. Yeah.